All right, so um, as you all know, I'm Sarah Kibazo, and um, uh, today we are going to talk about what are we supposed to tell our children by when, when it comes to sexuality. Uh, I was just having a, a short research that shows that, you know, uh, when children are told about sexuality by their parents, they make better choices, which are less risky. And, uh, you know, if, if you want your child to grow healthy, you need to be able to talk to them earlier so that they can be able to make decisions that are responsible, even as they face their adult life. That means that we will be able to teach them consent. You know, consent is when uh, you're able to tell your child, if somebody does this to you, you need to say no. If they do this to you, you can say yes. So you're able to teach them consent, no matter the gender, and in the long run, you will be giving them safety in the cycle where they are. So uh, when you talk about what by when, you know, many parents assume that their children are young until they're around 30. <laughs> You're still thinking, oh, my child is very young. My child is very young. Only for you to realize that, you know, by, can you imagine by the age of eight years, most children are exposed to porn. And sometimes it's by accident. And sometimes they don't know even what to do about it. So um, talking to them, actually gives them a background, you know, gives them a place to, to go back to a safety landing. It also makes them be informed so they can be able to make proper decisions when, mm -hmm. when they need to. Uh, I always say that knowledge is empowering. And uh, when you give them tricks and you give them some tips how to navigate when they are faced with situations, because these situations can come when you're not even there. And situations can also come when you're not at reach. You cannot be able to rescue them or help them. So when they have, a, when they have that knowledge, they know where to land on. And uh, having a proper background from our parents help them make better and better decisions. Um, I have a friend of mine who was uh, exposed to porn when she was around 13 years. And when she was exposed to porn, um, she didn't know what to do about it. She just sat down and watched, you know? It was her first time, so she just sat down and watched. Then with time, she came to realize that she wanted to watch it more and more and more. And that is how she got addicted into pornography. And sometimes you're thinking that, you know, my child is too young, my child is still a baby. But at the end of the day, you realize, oh, they've even passed the age that you're supposed to be telling them about some things. Imagine the music our children are watching. Can you imagine by four years, the kind of music they're dancing, yeah? The kind of music they're dancing, they're exposed to the words they're saying. You know, those things at the end of the day, they'll become their actions. They'll, they'll want to act. And so when you're telling yourself, oh, my children, my child is still very young. And imagine those guys, I can't even remember their names. <laughs> and, and you see, when we when we are talking talking about sexuality, I always say that you need to have values. Uh, values are basic um you know they're your basic beliefs what you believe in and values vary values vary and uh children have no filters but when you give them your values when you tell them that you see when you watch this when you see this happening you need to do one two three or rather when you when, when they're already exposed imagine a child who is they're coming to you and probably they're already exposed already addicted already you know what do you do about it? That is why actually we are here. So I'm going to just take you through that. Um, some of the tips that I normally give parents, when a child comes to you and maybe they're already exposed, one thing, maybe they've come and shown you like, uh, mommy, look at this, or daddy, look at this. Or maybe you've come to realize, oh, my child is already at this. What are you supposed to do? Most parents, we shout. You know, you can shout at the kid or yell at them. You may talk, you know? Uh, or sometimes you're panicking, okay? You're like, uh, oh my God, my child knows these things or my child has seen this. Uh, or sometimes you want even to send them away, you know? Like sometimes they come and ask you, mom, babies come from where? And then you're like, ah, ebunya maza. Or you want to avoid that content. So instead of doing that, you need to be very calm. And I normally tell parents, you need to just try and be calm. Just try and behave and tell yourself, you know what? Well, uh, if you're not ready to talk about it, then tell the kid, you know, we'll talk about this later. But if you're ready to talk about it, then you need to act very calm. It's like, um, you know, 
it's, it's a normal situation so that by you acting calm, you're actually helping that kid to, you know, to be able to relate to you, to be able to see that this thing that they are facing is not something that is supposed to be shameful, that somebody is supposed to hide from, okay? Uh, like in our culture today, girls have been so uh, objectified, meaning that they have been made to look like sex tools or something like that. Uh, and and if if we are we we are giving we are not giving them values at a young age, they grow up believing that you know what we are tools to be used by men for their own pleasure, for them to see what they want to see, for them you know to expose their bodies, they want to expose their body. But now when you give them values at a young age by telling your child, this is the way you're supposed to dress, this is the way you're supposed to sit, this is the way you're supposed to talk, you are actually giving them a background to, to rely on when they are faced with certain situations. All right, so, and, and most parents think that you're supposed to talk to your child about sexuality when they reach high school. Okay, when they reach teenagehood, when they reach, you know, adolescent and all that. But imagine, uh, as we always know, sexuality begins from birth. Okay, it begins from birth. So if you, if you, you can be able to break it down, and that is the reason why also I'm going to also show you how to break it down and just show your child, you know, this thing is part of our life. Today we are not going to use slides. I'm going to use some of my write up, and I'm just going to show you. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Oh no, it's not a good one. It's not a good one. I know I won't be able to, to show you then. Oh, you can be able to see it. You can read it. All right, yeah. So when you talk to your child earlier, uh, or rather when you start talking to your child about sexuality, they're able to make better choices. They're able to, you know, to live healthy, uh, a healthy body image and they're able to know what to say yes to and what not to say yes to, okay, consent, all right? And again, another thing that you're also helping them with is this, okay? They won't be ashamed about sexuality. They won't see it as something that is secretive. When, when something like that comes across there, you know the way we used to hide when it comes to maybe your period, you don't want to ask, when it comes to you, you know, your, your body image changing. I know like boys maybe, the, the weight dreams have begun, so they don't want to ask because they feel like it's something shameful. But when you begin these talks with them, they will see it's not something shameful. And again, they won't rely on media and their peers, okay? That is another thing, they don't rely on media and peers. And another very important aspect is that they'll be less, uh, they'll be less um, exposed to sexual abuse, okay? And even if it, it, it there happens, the child will be able to know the, the right person to talk to, okay? Uh, another thing is that they won't, be able, they won't look for love in the wrong places, which normally leads to, which can uh, lead to maybe early pregnancy and teenagehood and some early marriages and eloping, you know, when they're looking for love in various places that are wrong. And I just want to give you a question. If you feel like you're you 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 are late in talking to your child, because as I'm going to take you through the the, the stages, you, you might feel like you know what I'm late. I've not talked about this and that. Um, one thing I normally tell parents: you better apologize. Apologize to your child because if your child comes to you when they're already exposed to something and you've never talked to them about it, it is your fault. It is not their fault, it is your fault. So you're supposed to actually apologize and say, you know what, I'm sorry, I'd never told you, especially if you're talking to them, maybe about internet, maybe they've shown you something they've watched on internet and you're like, what, what is this you're watching? You're not supposed to go like that because it is you who didn't give them, you know? You didn't tell them this and this thing you're not supposed to watch, okay? And it is imp important to, to, to mention this, especially when it comes to relationship, when you're talking to your child about relationship, it is important to mention that, you know what? Um, I, and I think I'm, go I'm going to mention that, but let me mention that part at the end of it. But when you're talking to your child regarding sexuality, at the age of 13 and above, you, you, they, they are already you know, exposed to so many things. So many things, there's nothing to hide. There's nothing to hide. So um, let me go take you step by step. Let's begin with three years. What are you supposed to tell your child at three years? Okay, so at three years and below, 
at three years and below, your child should be able to know the body parts with their names, the correct names, okay? At three years and below, they're supposed to know their body parts and the correct name. It's not the time to use the choo-choo and the whatever. You're supposed to tell them this is a penis, this is a vagina. And the reason why you're supposed to do that, it helps even when it is uh, somebody molests them or somebody touches them and they need to say, they will be able to say, that person touched my vagina, this person touched my, my penis. And in that, they can be believed even in the court of law because they, it, 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 it shows that the child is assertive. Okay, so at that time, they're supposed to know their body parts. They're supposed to know who is supposed to touch where and where. And again, at three years and below, you should be able to teach them consent. Okay, tell them that uh, so-and-so should not touch you here. So-and-so should not do things to you. That song of these are my private parts. It's something that should be, you, you should echo it. Let not leave it to the teachers alone. Echo it, even when you're bathing them, when you're dressing them up, let them know. These are the parts that people should not touch. Because um, if you look at it, most of the things children are taught in school, they think it's for school purpose. But when you echo it, you make it look like, you know, it is this something that we're supposed to be doing. It is real, it is, yeah, they, they, become, they begin to absorb it. So let it not just remain as a song, come back home and affirm it and tell them, okay? So at four years, this is what you're supposed to be telling your child at four years. There is the body parts aspect, there is the consent aspect, and there is the safe circle. When you talk about safe circle, I've talked about body parts and consent. When you're talking about safe circle, we mean the people who are safe to them. Just in case I'm not around, you can tell auntie so-and-so, you can tell uncle so-and-so. Just in case mom is not around or dad is not around, these are self, self, uh, people whom you can rely on. So you're supposed to expose your child to the safe circle, expose them to the safe people that they can be able to rely on. Okay, that is at four years. At four years also, we realize that children are, um, are very inquisitive. They're asking a lot of things. Where do babies come from? Uh, you know, why, why is it, is he a boy? Why is, it a, is, he a, is she a girl? When they ask such kind of a question, be ready to answer them. Be ready to answer them. Be factual, give them facts, and uh, also give them values. And as you're doing that with four-year-olds, you use very short words, use very simple words. Don't make it so ambiguous, you know, make it short and simple, make it also easy for them to understand. Another aspect is this, at five years, five years to seven years, your child should be able to know about sex and where babies come from. Okay, uh, that is the time that they, they're doing a lot of experiments with their bodies. So let them know about sex and uh, babies. It is also important to tell them about, uh, to affirm their genders. Okay, uh, I'll just tell, tell you about that. And also it is the time that they're also touching their genitals and all that. You're supposed also to tell them about their body parts, the, gen the genitals, their use, and um, how private they should be. So uh, when I talk about gender affirmation, there's an age in children which are, we call it gender liquid. They are not, they, they are not so girlish, they're not so boyish. It happens in other children, in other children it's not. And um, at that time when you think like, oh, this boy, this kid, it's not like that. It's not that they're becoming gay or they're becoming this. They're just gender fluid at that time. They, are, they sometimes want to dress like girls. They sometimes want to dress like boys, play with girls' toys, play with boys' toys. I mean, it is just gender fluid and it is, it is okay. It is okay. Even as, as, as they do that, it's not a time for you to bash them and tell them, you know, we will see or Evie, don't do this and that. You're supposed to actually let them explore themselves because they're just trying to know themselves. And it, is, it, it happens in some kids, some kids it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that they have already, you know, become, if they, they are girls, they have already become boys. No, it's not that way. It is just a, a stage and it is called gender fluid stage. So you, you're supposed to affirm them, affirm their genders, uh, let them know, you know, uh, when you're a girl, you're supposed to sit there like this, you're supposed to dress like this, but whenever they feel like they want to, you know, dress like a boy, dress like a girl, 
and as long as it is not outside the house and all that, you can just allow them. Sometimes they want to experiment, maybe you are your, your makeups or they want to experiment. It is just fine. It is just fine. They're not, they're not um, saying that they are, they are this gender. They're still learning themselves. All right, so that is between the age of five to seven. Between the age of eight to nine, okay? Between the age of eight to nine, we've said that at the age of nine, most kids are already exposed to porn. So what are you supposed to do at age eight? Age eight, talk about porn. Talk about pornography. It is the time to prepare them for their puberty. It is the time to, you know, talk about homosexuality. The other day I was just, um with my daughter, she's nine. And when she came home and she told me that, you know what, my friend uh, told me that she's gay. And I'm like, your friend, how old is she? She's in their class, she's nine years. And I'm, uh, so how did she know she's gay? And she says that she doesn't know, but the girl just came back and told her, you know what, I'm gay. So can you imagine a nine year old already know they are gay? Yeah, so I think it is very important for you as a parent to start talking about those key things. I had already talked to her about it. So when she came to tell me, she was just, uh, you know, I, I tried to confirm, to confirm from her, like, okay, what do you know about gay? I wanted to know if she can remember. And she told me, and she told me what she told the friend. And I want to tell you parents, it is important in this day and age when the world is just talking, remember the cartoons they are watching, some of them are gay related and all that, you better start talking. Talk to them about pornography, okay? Let them know what pornography is because by the time they are being exposed, they already have a background. I normally tell my children, when you, when you see uh, people who are kissing, you know, who are holding hands, who are naked, they're removing their clothes and all that, you better come and tell me. Because the internet um, does not filter anything. The internet doesn't filter anything. And sometimes they, 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 are, they are searching something online and then they are interested to know more. So that is the time they bump on, on even pornographic material. So if when you've told them, when they just see something, they'll come back and tell you that I've seen this and I've seen this. And you're able to, you know what? give your values, you're able to talk more, you're able to open up to them and tell them what is it that they are risking. Okay, so um, there's a stage in uh, between the twin stage, at the twin stage, um, let me just confirm, I, di I didn't write the sheet for the twin age, but I just want to give you details of what you can be able to talk about when they are, when they are in their twin. And um, just a moment, just a moment, let me check this out. Let me just check this out in a minute. All right, all right, just a moment. I just want to give you details on the twin, twin stage. My laptop today is really misbehaving. Is really misbehaving. So when they, the twin stage is actually between 10, 10 and uh, 12, that's the stage we call the twin. They're not yet in a teenage, they are there, they're just there. So what are you supposed to talk about when they're just there, you know? What are you supposed to talk about? You're supposed to, just a moment. All right, so uh, at the twin age, is the time for you to revisit the puberty talk, okay? Get real, okay, get real with them at that time. Talk about sex, talk about attractions. Uh, many times I've talked to you about sex, so you know how to talk to your child when it comes to sex. Talk about attractions and value. You know, at that time they're attracted to the opposite sex and all that. Give more, internet questions, tell them about the internet world, what, what it is all about, uh, and how they're supposed to behave online and all that. And you can, they can ask you questions about everything and anything at that time. So you should be ready to answer them. And even if they don't ask, be ready to initiate conversations. I've given you details how to initiate conversations. You can check in, the, um, in some of the videos that we have. And, um, Keep your values sane at that time. That means that if you're preaching water, be that water. 
Okay, also drink that water. Don't tell them water and you, you are drinking wine. So keep your values sane. It's for, the, for their own sake. That is in their twin, uh, their twin age. That is between 10 and 12. Revisit the puberty talk. Talk about it. Talk about puberty. The body changes. You know what they expect. If it is the weight dreams and everything, go, go into it, go full into it. Tell them, tell them all the things they expect, the menstruation and all that. So you should be able to equip yourself in those areas. And as you keep on with us, we'll be also digging deeper into puberty changes. So at the end of, of 13, age of 13 and above, actually is the time when you're supposed to, you know, talk about everything. At this time, children know almost everything don't hide anything from them talk about sex talk about contraceptives talk about you know dating talk about um yeah you can talk about dating contraceptive masturbation stis peer pressure talk about them talk about them allow them to ask questions be calm with them appreciate their friends they really love that appreciate their friends talk and uh, keep initiating topics Okay, and do more of listening. Listen to them a lot because they love listening. And I want to just to caution you, parents. Sometimes you may begin these talks and your child is like, no, I don't want to hear it. Our, our, our oldest daughter, she was like that. She, even at 12, she would never want us to talk about anything sexuality-based. But, but we kept on pressing on. We kept on pressing on. And, and right now, we, she's 13 and we are almost talking about anything anywhere you know she, she's just open with us so keep pressing on even if you 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 feel like you know they don't want to hear from you they don't want to talk to you about it don't give up don't give up keep on pressing on keep on opening up those topics remember how i told you how you're supposed to you know be able to talk to them when it is an open space and all that when you're talking to to your your not an open space but when you're doing an activity don't make it a lecture, you know, don't make it a lecture. Don't make it look like we have to talk. Sit down. This is the time to talk. No, no, no. Make it a fun thing. You can talk, you can talk to them when you're having, when they're having their own, maybe you're, you're doing some dishes, you're cooking, you're doing some fun activity, you're playing with them some, some games or something and throw in a talk, throw in a topic. Or of like this week, I've been talking about grabbing opportunities. There are many opportunities that can set up themselves and you're able to take the opportunity and start talking about a particular topic. I just wanted to mention this for the sake of parents who have teenagers. When it comes to relationship, it is important to mention to your child that you know anybody, if they're relating with anybody, anybody who brings up the topic of sex, and they're just in a, they they want to relate or they are you know they are, they are friends with them that is somebody that should always throw a red flag yeah that is something you can tell them that's a red flag if they hear their friends or their you know their counterparts want, want them just to talk about sex or rather they want to have sex with them it is it is a red flag okay because true love starts with being conscious that is that is what i normally tell teenagers if you are in a true love relationship the other, it starts by you being conscious of the other person, being conscious of their needs, being conscious of what they want to become, being conscious of what they want to achieve in life, uh, where they want to be, you know, and you want to be able to help them to achieve that purpose, okay? Any friend who leads you into sex or in a relationship that, you know, wants to lead into sex, just know that that a red flag. That's one thing you should be, just a tip that you can give your girls and your boys. Yeah, because when it comes to sex, you want to get there when you are ready, you're ready for it, you're ready for everything, you're ready for marriage and all that. Uh, so if, if somebody comes up with such kind of a topic, just know that, you know what, this is a red flag. So that's about it. That's about it. That's about what and when we're supposed to talk about to your child regarding sexuality. And I want just to tell you, parents, not not every parent has everything, you know, compact. You know, you know, like you can be able to talk about everything to your child. Sometimes it is good when you you when you release them to somebody who can be able to talk to them, somebody whom you believe have the same values as you. Okay, and um, it is fine. It is very very fine if you can be able to release them to somebody else. Things that you can be able to handle, handle them, okay? And, uh, but always try, 
always try so that they can know, even if you're releasing them to somebody else, the back still stops with you. Okay, the back still stops with you. They can always um, be confident with you. They can always talk to you. They can always come back to you to check on the things that they want to check on when it comes to sexuality. So this is about it. That's about it. I've come to the end of my talk. I don't know if there's any question or any suggestion or any ideas that you want to send across. I'll really appreciate. So um, you can come back on and just talk to me and tell me, um, maybe you can write a question on the chat or maybe we can just discuss. I'm going to stop the, the, the recording so that it can be easier for all of us. Okay, thank you.